Well, I found some more footage from the final talk we're able to share. It uh, shows me using a short song to cue my students to return to their seats after they've been working on something on their own here and there throughout the room. And I'll also go on to point out, I could have initiated the same routine with one of my all-time favorite sound makers, which is a dog squeak toy. And although either one would work, there's a distinct advantage to using a song for the transition. And the advantage is this. The song creates a time frame in which the students operate. It limits how long they've got. And the great thing is, before too long, students internalize the song and can maintain a proper pace themselves. Without that time frame, there's a chance they're going to dawdle and goof around and talk and all that stuff they like to do, which usually triggers a bunch of teacher words to pick up the pace. I think the song is a better way to go. So let's go back to the final talk. Sweet little song. All the men ones, please go back to your seats. Since my guys are allowed to work away from their seats, I need a quick cue to get you back in your seat. And as opposed to using my dog's squeak toy or a clicker, which I love, see, sounds are nice because they're limbic and they communicate, but they don't have timers built into them. So if I want you back in your seat, I could do this. And all that meant was I need your attention, which is much better than boys and girls. Eyes, please. People. <laughs> now, if they're on task, that channel's not available to you. You're going to get a busy signal. You're talking to a closed door with your words because of all the verbal stuff going on inside their heads. This cuts through all the clutter. Doesn't matter what your native language is. We all speak squeak, squeak. So if I do that, <laughs> If I do that to hook you, then my words are effective. But if I'm only going to say, please return to your seat, and we have to do that on a regular basis, let's eliminate all this. Here's the thing about sounds and songs. You have to self-assess. What do we do in this classroom on a repetitive basis? I can initiate with a sound or a song. The advantage of a song, of course, got the time frame built into it. By the way, that Andy Griffith song was just 13 seconds long. It's available on the CD, and it's also one of the buttons in the Song Buttons PowerPoint show you can download from my website. My recommendation is to use a sound maker for getting attention. For routines and transitions, I recommend a song. The song not only tells them what to do, but how long they have to do it. And just think about all those unnecessary words you won't have to use by letting a song do the talking for you. Hey, thanks for watching.